Okay, this is going to be embarrassing. It's all your fault, he pointed at his wife as he opened the door. Welcome to the Timekeeper's Inn, Mr. Hill. Where are you headed? The desk clerk, named Adiona, smiled and pulled her dark hair over her ear and out of her face as she waited for an answer. Benjamin looked back at his wife, stunned by the clerk knowing his name. He mouthed the word, What? to his wife in disbelief as he looked over his shoulder at her. Rose nodded as if she were encouraging him to say the words. Ben furrowed his dark eyebrows and then looked back at Adiona. Boston, February 29, 1836. Benjamin looked quickly at his feet to avoid embarrassment. That will be $18.36, please. Adiona smiled and held her hand out. That's ridiculous. Benjamin spun, facing his wife. Pay the woman, Benjamin, Rose said in a stern whisper, then added, You just made five hundred dollars. Rose spoke firmly in a hushed tone through a tight-lipped smile. Pay the nice lady and let's get to our room. I've had a long day and I am tired. Rose leaned against the wall of the front desk office, seemingly irritated at her husband. Here you go. I hope that there is one of those new color televisions for that price. Benjamin took the key to room number two. Nick grinned at him as the hills walked out of the office. Nick nodded at Adiona, the desk clerk, with a sheepish grin plastered on his face as he turned and followed the Hill family. Hey, Benjamin, thank you for doing that for me. There's one more thing I think you should know. Nick waited for Rose to go into the room before he finished. You told me I could keep the money. Benjamin began to get angry. Of course, the money is yours. But when you and your family wake up tomorrow, you will be in the 1800s. And in Boston. I thought you should know. It might not be safe for your family to venture out into the world that you will be waking up in. It's a time of slavery in many states. Massachusetts is not exactly a free state. Not in the 1800s. Nick flinched when Benjamin spun on him, his glare showing an age-old anger that came with years of oppression. I am not a racist, Benjamin. Not one bit. I just need you to know what you will be up against tomorrow. I need to go somewhere first thing in the morning, so if you don't see me around the hotel, don't stress, okay? Try and stay close to the hotel. Believe me when I say that you don't want to be out past midnight. Nick became very serious. He needed Benjamin to follow his instructions. Damn, you talk funny. Stress? What the hell are you talking about? Slavery? You need to seek some help. They will lock you up in the system if they hear you talk nonsense like that. Damn, man, stay away from my family. Don't mention slavery to my kids. Benjamin shook his head as if he couldn't believe the insinuation. He tossed the last suitcase in his room and began to pull the door shut as a foot blocked the door. Whatever you do, don't check out of this motel under any circumstances. Keep that room key. Don't lose it. I know you don't believe a word I am saying, but trust me, you will in the morning. Two rules. Don't lose the key and be back here before midnight. If you decide to roam around the city, leave yourself a map so you know how to get back to your room. This motel changes with time. It might look modern to you now, but trust me, it's going to get very old by morning. Nothing will seem familiar and your car will not be here. Nick knew that Benjamin wouldn't believe a word of what he was telling him, but he had to tell him, You are crazy as hell, but I needed the money, so thank you. We will be leaving for Fresno first thing in the morning, so I will say goodbye to you now. Thanks for the easy money. Benjamin put his firm hand out to put the squeeze on Nick. 
I think you will be seeing me tomorrow. This motel is not your average motel. Nick squeezed back and then dropped Benjamin's hand and continued down the sidewalk to his room, two doors down.